Welcome to the MBA Mission Podcast, where every week we discuss different MBA application components and give our expert guidance on everything business school admissions related. Hi, this is Harold Szymanski with the MBA Mission Podcast. I'm here today with my colleague, Kate Richardson. Hi, Kate. Hi, Harold. How's everything going with you? It's great. Thanks for having me on. Of course, of course, of course. Kate, among many roles, among being a consultant and doing a lot of things here, you are also the person who's in charge of our mock Wharton team-based discussions. And for those of you who don't know, Wharton, unlike other schools, has a very unique way of interviewing its candidates. And that is they actually have a group interview where a lot of people are thrown in a room together and really how they work together is the basis of the interview. Um, with that in mind, Kate, that's a quick overview. With that in mind, Kate, just tell me about what the Wharton team-based discussion is about, yeah, your own thinking on it, what do you think it takes to be successful with it, and just anything else that's top of mind when it comes to the Wharton team-based discussion. Yeah, absolutely. You're right that it, it definitely stands out compared to other interviews. It's really the only MBA program that does a team-based interview. Wharton has been doing it for a while. I think I believe it's 2012 that they started okay, well. doing it. So it has been a while. Um, and they're really proud of this process, I think, too. I think for Wharton, you know, they believe it kind of models the way that you work in an MBA environment and their program, which is a highly collaborative setting. Um, I think they have identified certain skills that lead to success at Wharton, and this is a good way for them to see those skills in action. Sure. which you may not be able to do in a, a typical one-on-one -on -one interview. And I think, you know, th their intention is to try to get to see, you know, how you act in real life or as, you know, as a, a real person, not in kind of a forced one-on-one -on -one interview where people can be pretty rehearsed and scripted. I'm not sure it always works out perfectly that way. It, it has its own challenges and it's hard to, to truly be yourself, even in this team-based setting. But I think that's Wharton's intention, and I, I think it does a pretty good job of um, bringing out those collaborative skills and, and applicants. No, that makes sense. Uh, again, you and I work with a lot of clients, a lot of different clients. I have to say, out of every type of interview, this has to be the most intimidating interview for most mm -hmm. of my clients. And I think part of it is, they believe, and I'd love for you to, to respond to this, they believe you have to go in there and in some ways, you know, quote, own the room, being yeah. the presence there, come up with the answer. And, and we should explain that. Well, well, why don't you explain just what the requirements are for the right. interview itself and sort of what material you get first and how to prepare for the interview. Right. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So, yeah, the way that the interviews work is that Wharton gives everybody a prompt before the discussion. So every candidate has the same prompt to look at. It is a problem to solve, and the, the problem varies year by year, but it always relates to something at Wharton. So it could be something like developing a course, a new course for the program, uh, planning an event, something like that, that that relates to Wharton, something that hopefully everybody can contribute to. Um, and so each participant in the team comes in with their initial ideas. We call that a pitch, yep. right? You get a, a minute to pitch your proposal to the problem. Um, and then you go from there and, and you discuss each person's proposals and you come up with a, a group solution and present that to some observers. So it is a focused discussion and that, you know, you're given a task and a limited time. It's only... 35 minutes for the whole thing, but you know, some of that includes um, the pitches and some presentations. So really just 25 minutes for the core discussion. Um, so it's a, a pretty focused discussion that they're asking for. Is that helpful? Yeah, no, that is helpful. As I think about what you can show in 25 minutes, I wonder, and if and my clients really are very concerned in terms of what role should they play. Yeah. How important is it for them to be your answer is picked yeah. or you're the one in the room the room who almost dominates the conversation? Like, like what sort of roles do people play? Should they play? I mean, how do all the pieces actually fit together when you get into that room? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. It, I always tell people there's no winning in this yeah. type of interview. Um, but I think it does cause anxiety because you're actually, you know, in a, a, a virtual room with your competitors, right? You're face-to-face you're -face with them, and so it causes a lot of anxiety. 
Um, but yeah, having the best idea definitely doesn't matter. It's more about how you participate in the, in the discussion. So it, you know, it can help to prepare a good idea in advance and we can talk more about how to prepare. Um, but you know, that's only one minute of the whole yes. discussion. Right. And, uh, you really need to think about the roles you can play in a, in a group setting. So, you know, that definitely could be a leadership role, a facilitator role, if somebody's confident in that. I still wouldn't, you know, want someone who's dominating the right. discussion, right? It needs to be more, you know, guiding the group, moving them along, you know, helping with the process of deciding. Right. That's kind of the leadership I think they're looking for. Um, but, you know, there's plenty of other roles to play, right? Like being a critical thinker and asking tough questions maybe even being, you know, skeptical voice at times when the group needs it. That's another um, role. Another one is, you know, helping make sense of the group's discussion, right? Okay. Kind of synthesizing, summarizing, wow. um, helping the group move forward. Um, and then I think there's, you know, another role is just, you know, encouraging the group too, right? This yeah. is a team exercise. Um, it, can, it can be helpful to show support for others' ideas bring them into the discussion. So just, you know, kind of the definition of being a good team player. No, that makes sense. So you, you touched on this notion of that first one minute pitch. Uh, um, what do you think makes for a successful, a more successful one and a less successful? One? Yeah, that's a good question. So like I said, there's a problem you're given from Wharton. So I think you do need to come into that pitch with a clear response, right? You, you need to come in with a clear idea. I think you need to and make sure it resonates with your audience. So remember, this is a pitch. So explain, you know, why this makes sense for Wharton or why you know, you're personally invested in this idea. Don't just read off a bunch of, of facts or, you know, plans for your idea. Um, and then I think, you know, having some structure to it, right? So you only have a minute. Um, you're not going to be able to cover every component of your idea or everything you've thought about. But have a good structure, um, you know, seem organized in that initial um, proposal. I think those are typically what I would advise. No, no, that makes sense then. I sort of joke with my clients that by all means have a good pitch, have a good idea, but also pray to God that your idea is not picked. <laughs> because <laughs> if your idea is picked, suddenly you're the expert in the room and people turn towards you, which is really quite frightening when all right. done. So, right. So what we in MBA Mission do is we actually create some mock pitches. We we spend some time, I'm going to talk in another episode with my colleague Katrina, who actually sets up these mock TBDs and gets the six people in, in the in a room. So we watch a lot of these. I mean, yeah. I myself, in one of the observers, you are, I'll call you the head observer. Or, um, <laughs> Kate, what are those things that you really like when you see a group working together? And what are those things that you like you cringe when you uh, when you see work, a group working together. Yeah, I think that the number one thing that I like seeing is when groups are having fun. Yeah, yeah. and that sounds really it sounds kind of superficial, but I think you can just tell when like a group is is clicking and when they're just really getting into the discussion and mm -hmm. naturally being curious and exploring mm -hmm. the ideas and maybe even you know making a joke or making each other laugh, right? Yeah. Like. I think that's that's just so natural and that that it translates to how you hopefully will work with a team at Wharton, right? right. right. Um, I also like, you know, when people are really thoughtful of each other and they, you know, use each other's names and they, you know, if somebody speaks over someone, they, right. you know, find a way to bring them back in. I think sometimes groups become a little too polite to each other. So you do have to watch out for that. But I think, you know, that inclusiveness and just kind of general good vibes, um, I really like to see for sure. Um, cringeworthy, I mean, you know, we're pretty lucky. We have, we usually have good, good mock sessions. Um, you know, occasionally there's a imbalance in participation. So you right. might see someone who's really dominant in the, uh, in the discussion and, and someone who's really quiet. And, and that's always a little tough because, you know, it, it can be hard to find those moments to speak up. And, and I yeah. think that's tough for those individuals. And I think another, you know, potentially cringy uh, instance is just when people are 
you know, maybe trying to impress the group with right. their knowledge of Wharton or right. their background or something like that. You know, to your point, it's not about having that winning idea or getting your idea picked. Um, it's, it's more about just how you engage with others in the room. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. Huh? There's always a couple of truisms that I sometimes tell my clients. The first is if you think you've t spoken too much, you probably have. And, <laughs> and, and, and also, I tell folks in every team, it doesn't matter whether it's in Warden or somewhere else, in every team there's always one SOB. And if you don't know who that person is, it may just be you. So to always just sort of to sort of keep that in my, to keep that in mind, um, yeah. uh, Kate. And I guess one of the key questions is, how do you know when you're at the answer? Like when? At what point do you say, okay, team, we've had enough? At, at that point, um, you know, when do you start? I would say wrapping it up. Right, right. So as I mentioned, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you do your pitches at the beginning. It's yep. just a 60 second pitch each, 25 minute discussion. And then um, there's some Wharton observers in, right. in the session, of course, who are timing this for you and, and guiding right. you. They'll stop you and, and then ask you to present. So, you know, I think of that 25 minute discussion, you need to be saving at least the last few minutes, maybe five minutes to talk about uh, how you're going to present and make sure everybody's on the same page about the idea. And you're probably going to spend the first five minutes debating ideas and deciding. Right. So that really only leaves 15 minutes to yeah. debate the different components of, of the idea. Now, now, Wharton does usually lay out a specific prompt, like I said, but that also typically includes five or six components, you know, right. Right. if it's developing a course, you might have to come up with a, a professor who would teach that course and you right. come up with a name for the course. Yeah. So someone in the group needs to be checking back on that list and right. making sure everything's been covered. So yeah, I would say it's, it's a pretty difficult task. You know, right. usually groups are able to cover everything, but rarely do they end up with a lot of extra time in, right. unless they're just you know, if, if a bunch of people come with the same idea, then maybe a, the agreement is really easy. Um, but I think there's just, you know, there's always different layers you could bring in, maybe throw in some new ideas to the discussion, other angles as far as how to, you know, involve other components of Wharton. So I think there's usually more to discuss. No, no that, make, that makes sense then. And so the, we get to a presentation at the end, or Wharton gets to a presentation at the end, um, and this is always a question I've had, is does everybody have to be part of that final presentation? Uh, if I'm very shy, can I opt out of it? Uh, what's your general advice on that? Yeah, we get that question a lot. You know, there's usually five or six people in these, these team-based discussions. You have five minutes to present. So that's generally enough time for, for multiple people to be involved in that presentation. Remember, this is a team-based discussion, so I don't think it's okay for just one or two people to do the presentation. That said, I also don't think it has to be all six or all, you know, five people. I think if, if, if it makes sense logically to break it up, maybe there's four parts of the presentation and that makes sense, do that, you know. I don't think it has to be everybody, and I think especially if if someone has been more vocal during the conversation, right. it's okay for them to take a step back. Um, and that might actually look good, right? Yeah. I, I think if you know that you're quieter, or you've been yeah. quieter, then you yeah. gotta take a role in that right. presentation though. You know, right. don't you think? Yeah, yeah, no, I think that makes sense. I know sometimes the people who have the most trouble with this are in fact the quiet people. Right. Yeah, and uh, even though, listen, some some of the most insightful people, as we all know, are the ones who are sitting back and waiting to sort of crack the answer open. Yeah, they probably have some good ideas or good questions. You know, that's a, that that reminds me of another tip, which is, you know, a lot of times the group will be discussing something that you don't necessarily have expertise around, right? You might be talking about AI or sustainability or something like that, where where you don't have expertise, and if there's uncertainty, like if you have uncertainty, it's very likely that other people do too. It can never really hurt to ask questions, ask for others to clarify what they were thinking or what what ideas they had in mind. 
there's a really important role to play in terms of asking good questions. No, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And just to finish on the notion of the warden interview, once the warden team-based discussion is over, then everyone breaks up and has a one-to-one -one interview with, with what really is a warden student. I think yeah. it, it's true. Well, question mark. Uh, Kate, isn't it true that it's the warden observers of the team-based discussion are, in fact, warden second-year students? Typically, yes. Yeah, yeah. they are um, warden admissions fellows, I believe they call oh, them, and they're okay. second-year students who are trained by admissions to facilitate these team-based discussions. Sometimes in the later rounds, like round three or the deferred candidate round, we see those run more by um, full-time admissions committee admissions. members, staff members. But yeah, generally it's, it's student observers. And then um, after the discussion, they do breakout rooms where they do one-on-ones with each candidate and you get a chance to, to speak with that person who was just observing you. Um, but it's only 10 minutes. It's really right. quick. <laughs> right. no, 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 of course. And um, at that point on these one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, do, do we know what the questions are? Aren't they sort of why an MBA and why Wharton? Is that generally what they are? They, they have varied in the past. Okay. Yeah. So for a while, Wharton was always asking pretty much just two questions. Yeah. Why do you want an MBA? Why Wharton? Yeah. Um, and then more, you know, recently we started to see them ask some more questions about the team-based discussion itself. Oh. Okay. So they might ask, you know, what did you like? What was a challenge? What role did you play today? Right. Um, so you need to be, you know, quick with those reflections. You can't prepare for that yeah. style of one-on-one. Of -on -one. I think it's just, yeah, it's really important to be succinct, be reflective, add some new information, you know, from what they've already seen in the discussion. Um, but yeah, that, those one-on-ones will go by pretty quick. Yeah, perfect and great. Well, Kate, just as we're wrapping up here, uh, any words of advice for someone who just found out, congratulations to them, they just found out they, in fact, did get a warden team-based discussion interview. What sort of words of advice would you have for them? Yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend preparing, but not over-preparing. And you really do need to stay adaptable mm -hmm. because you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what ideas your peers are going to pitch. You don't know what the group is going to decide. You don't know if even the moderators might give you different instructions than, than we Why? just talked about today. Sometimes we see curveballs like that where they'll say, you know, you have a 10 minute presentation in the end instead right. of five. Right. So you just have to be adaptable. You have to be listening and, and kind of on your toes and as much as you can just try to try to relax um i think the other thing is is you know just try to do some reflection beforehand on like what you naturally are good at in groups like what is your leadership style like how are you helpful to groups and try as much as you can to to do a lot of that in in the session if like if you can um if you can't again be ready to adapt and, and play a different role no, that makes sense then. Great. Well, Kate, thanks for joining me here today at the MBA Mission Podcast. And for those of you who want to spend 30 minutes with Kate or with me or any one of our other colleagues, by all means, go to the MBA Mission website, sign up for our free consultation, and we can chat with you about practically anything you want when it comes to MBA missions. Kate, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Harold. But bye, bye now. Bye. Thanks for listening to the MBA Mission Podcast. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcasts so you don't miss an episode. We wish you the best of luck with your MBA applications and look forward to helping you on your journey to business school.